On March 15, 2012, Film Courage sat down with James and Say Young Darling of the Morgan Spurlock doc Comic-Con 4, A Fan's Hope. This audio is an excerpt of that press roundtable interview. To find out more about this amazing look at Comic-Con and the fans that attend, please visit ComicConMovie.com. I want to jump in and just decide to know after seeing the film. Did did you feel like you wanted to run out of the hall at that exact moment because of all the attention on you, or were you just stunned in your spot? It was like as soon as he asked, it was like tears. Like that was all that was going on. Was just like because it was so weird to me because he the whole weekend he had been acting so weird <laughs> and like wanting to get away from me and not wanting to hang out, which was really unusual because we always do everything together. So it was just like I think a big relief. I was on board to propose. Yeah, why you were like me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, but yeah, it it. It was fun. like in the moment, you know, even though there was kind of so much attention around it, it still felt like it was kind of like super just, intimate. Yeah, it just was like just us two, and then you know I had to update the face- Facebook profile, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. I have a question. So you guys were like you were the con for Comic Con. Did you have the intention when you were starting to do this movie, or you went through the casting process of? Um, proposing, or were you just like, oh, we're dating, it'd be fun to do this? Um, so, so the uh, there was kind of a um, a casting call on Ain't It Cool, like just sort of like share us, you know, your your stories and what you're planning to do this year at Comic Con. And I had been thinking about the uh, about proposing at Comic Con for for a, a couple months, okay. and then it was just like, yeah, I should do it. Let me, I'm gonna do it. And it's sort of like, you know, um, doing doing that the the kind of. Uh, uh, Sharing my plans with the, with the sort of casting people right. was was you know they I was like, they got, I, was like I, can, I, I I can't back out of this now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, how'd you sell it to her then? What'd you tell her about the documentary? Um, well, so they asked if we could be um, uh, uh, if we could do like a little audi- audition tape, and I was kind of like, okay, how how am I gonna yeah how am I gonna play this with her? And so what I told her was that I had just shared how we had essentially started dating at Comic-Con um, the, the year prior. And, you know, they were interested in following a, a Comic-Con romance. Um, and I think I was more liable to buy it because we work in, like, media. So I was like, yeah, yeah like, we're like the film. movie version. You know what I mean? So they have the comics person and the cosplay person and we'll be like the movie people. Right. And, and we're like dating. Right. I think it's why I bought What's your adorable? Right? <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so we, we filmed that we filmed the uh, uh, audition tape where we kind of talked about ourselves and our, our, our interests and our relationship. And then I, I covertly, and we did it in her, her, her family's house, and then I covertly, like privately, like you filmed a little agenda. Exactly. <laughs> secret mission, certainly. Now, have you guys seen the movie? We yeah. have. Uh, outside of your story, which one of the other stories really, really got to you? Which was the one that you were like, damn, that's awesome. Uh, I'd say, I'd say, for me, it was Holly's story. For me, it's the soldier. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah Eric. 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 like, adorable kid. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like, your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we, we can't stand to watch ourselves, but no, we loved all the other stories. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make a cut where we're not in. <laughs> watch it. So how did you guys initially meet at Comic-Con? Like, we, we discussed how there was, like, this How to Meet Girls panel, or right. yeah, yeah. how did you guys meet? Uh, well, we actually, I mean, we, we were both going to school um, at UC Santa Barbara. I was just starting my master's, and she was uh, finishing her bachelor's. And so we, we actually met. On, on campus, um, and but we discovered that we were both going to Comic Con in a couple weeks, and so so um, yeah, the, some of, some of the, the the coverage has claimed that we met at Comic Con, right, which isn't right, quite right. true, but like it we essentially had our first date. date. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, let's meet up, and like you know, it's just like we seem to get along. We're both going to Comic Con. And she was like, oh, there's this girl I have to meet up with. I don't know if I can hang out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
and then he was like, yeah, let's hang out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just seemed, I just seemed cool. <laughs> was there, was there another girl you were Not really, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had friends, you know. <laughs> met up with a, a whole bunch of friends. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Girlfriend. <laughs> How yeah. come you didn't have Kevin Smith marry you? And what was the actual wedding and honeymoon like? Uh, well, so we... Um, uh, we, we followed up with Kevin Smith's people, and they, they sort of offered us, um, he actually has a podcast where he marries people, Smarried. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's, like, in this, like, adorable little block, black box theater in L.A. and stuff. Yeah. But, like, we wanted a wedding. Yeah, we felt for, our, for, our, for, our, for, for both of our families, since we had done this kind of geekiest engagement possible, we might want to have one aspect of our marriage that was, uh, that was a little more traditional. Yeah. And we, we both lived in Santa Barbara, so it was, like, well, it's a de- we live in a destination right. wedding, yeah. destination. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but we for for our honeymoon, we actually um, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, it's pretty geeky. Um, so um, Harry Knowles, who runs Annie Cool News, uh, invited us to his buttonomathon in Austin. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Button Amazon is a 24-hour film festival at the Alamo Draft House uh, in Austin, and um, uh, and it's it's 24 hours of uh, films you haven't seen, yeah. like films that haven't even come out yet, some like classic films that he just wants to kind of you know expose uh, to the world, um, or or Take your ass down and you don't leave for 24 hours. Yeah. You can go to the bathroom, and the yeah, and the draft house like actually serves food. So, yeah, deep fried, and it starts to smell real gross. Only <laughs> so, so that was our that was our very geeky honeymoon. Honey yeah. So. What is your guys' primary geekeries? Like, what what do you nerd out about? Each of you um, and together. He's getting me into Star Trek because he's try. been I'm like What's Star Trekky. I grew up on the Next Generation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I've seen it all, and um, uh, so that's that's my primary geekery, and probably Firefly. Yeah. Absolutely. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, are most of your friends like you, or different? <laughs> normal. Like, normal. 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 What is? Normal. 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 Um, you know where you are, right? <laughs> I I'd say we have a, a a pretty good range of friends. <laughs> yeah, like um, it, friends who I I would claim are geekier than us, but um, like who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Like, yeah. <laughs> But that raises an interesting point. I think that being a nerd is just so cool right now. Like, yeah. we're talking yeah. about the next generation. I mean, it's like that is the new cool. Like, yeah. anything, like, you know, in that realm. So The whole computer yeah. generation. Is yeah. Like, and the cool one. <laughs> <laughs> the cool one. I want to ask you about the ring and the Lord of the Rings. You know, so I don't, all the jokes and stuff that were made in the documentary. Right, right. Uh, Peter Jackson or Elijah Wood, have you met any of those guys since that? Uh, Elijah, uh, Elijah, Wood. Uh, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood was at but I'm a fan. <laughs> I, we were like he comes to button on a thon so I was like standing like in line behind him waiting to go into the theater and I was like freaking out but I was like acting really cool and then I sat down and I started talking really loud about how I saw Elijah Wood and he's so hot I love the rings blah 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 and he turns around and he was in the seat right in front of me and I was just like oh my god it was so embarrassing uh, well, have you been recognized from the documentary I mean because I know it's had limited screenings and stuff and people have been like oh my god it's you guys because we uh, like that we're like I got it back <laughs> uh, not yet I, I mean yeah. certainly yeah it, I, don't, I don't think it's it's been seen by a wide enough audience. I don't know. Just wait till next month. Just wait yeah. Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be stopping and starting a Comic Con a yeah. picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you guys looking forward to for next year's con? Do you, are you planning on going? Well right, uh, well, right now we weren't able to get tickets. They just like oh. sold out. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was yeah. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, Morgan's Morgan's made made some promises. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. What do you guys think about that? About the the, the scale to which it's gotten. You guys are hall age people. Like, sure. Just like the, there's sort of a balkanization of con these days. How do you feel about that? Um, a lot of people like to blame Twilight. 
but <laughs> because I remember, like, as I've been going for um, uh, for about seven years, and my first, like, seven years ago, it, it didn't sell out, you know. Um, so, um, but it's just more and more people have become aware of it. I mean, they've been running it for. I think because geeks are geeks, and that's what we do, we feel very like enthusiastic slash possessive about the things we like. But I think mm-hmm. if it gets some like 12 year old girl who's only read Twilight to become interested in something else <laughs> that's geeky, mm-hmm. you know, or like gets her into sci-fi or fantasy, mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing. And yeah, it's like, it's so annoying when there's so many people, but it's it's a good thing. Are you yeah. seeing that happen though? Because one of the things I tend to worry about is that the idea with Hall Age is that you, people stay all day, they get exposed to things mm-hmm. that they wouldn't be exposed to otherwise. But I remember uh, I was at WonderCon one year and the DC panel was, uh, was on and you had this room full of people uh, waiting to see a Doctor Who screening in right. full Doctor Who regalia, mm-hmm. and the DC people couldn't get inside to see their own panel, right. and I mm-hmm. and I don't know how much. So you have any anecdotes of like you see like a young girl come in for Twilight and then leave with like an, or an action figure or something underneath her? You see that? Do you see the cross pollination happening? Is it the con working? Yeah, no, I I I, I hear I I hear your argument, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, because you definitely. Uh, because so much is going on, you definitely can just kind of make the con uh, just what you just want. What you want. Um, and but but part of you know part of that experience is like you know in order to get into um, you know that panel that you you know that that Tron panel that you really want to go to, um, uh, you know there's there's something beforehand that you you inevitably have to like line up for that in order to make sure that you can get into that next thing and kind of through that you kind of. <laughs> get, you know, entertainment content that you, you weren't necessarily seeking kind of mm-hmm. becomes a part of it because everything is programmed just kind of back to back. And I think just like because you're next to so many people for so long, whether it's in line or in a seat, there's going to be something you guys will talk about that you didn't know about where even if you're like just kind of file it away for later and you're not immediately like, I'm going to go buy that toy. Yeah. I think there, it's like happening on a more um, kind of like small level. That's what I right. was. I mean, I went and I had specific things I wanted to cover and I went and I was just like hanging out there. I'm like, this is awesome. And like, bought like a super girl shirt and all of a sudden like, the, I was exposed as a girl, exposed Aww. to a whole bunch of other stuff. It was really cool, yeah. Now, you guys actually brought up a good point that I want to get to because uh, people, like my readers, some people don't know that because something's at Hall H at like four, you can actually go in at nine and just hang out all day mm-hmm. and until your panel. And you guys kind of did that a little bit. So and this is a question that I asked Mark, uh, Morgan about because it wasn't covered in the documentary, which I was grateful for. But were you guys in Hall H when that dude stabbed the other dude? <laughs> that was right before he proposed. <laughs> that was right before. <laughs> uh, that guy got stabbed because I saw yeah. your proposal in the next yeah. Yeah. show with the Harrison Ford guy in handcuffs. Yeah. I was like, were you guys in there when that happened? We were there. It was so scary. Yeah, and it was, yeah, that was, that was the... You had to clear out the hall for like two hours, right? They yeah, everything got delayed. Yeah. But they, could, they didn't want to have cameras in there. Yeah, so there was, wow, there was, was like, right. so there was no, like, oh, oh yeah, it was not, it was a scratch, and, yeah. 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 it was just a scratch, and, no, no, no it was, in the face with a ballpoint, and, it was directly in the eye, that's why, yeah, yeah. that's why, yeah. yeah. it was, yeah. 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 it spread around, it was in the eye, and then we were all cracking our mind about injury, the eye motif jokes, because, did you, did you have an instance when that happened, did you look at Morgan and the crew and go, I don't know if I want to do this today, or were you just like, I'm going to do this anyway? There was definitely, like, in the kind of immediate aftermath of it, I was kind of, I, I, I was definitely like, oh, this is, you know, like, Not this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, and I know that they, uh, yeah, there was, um, they, they did kind of kick out, like, a lot of kind of press, and, and, and Morgan had to kind of, like, um, Negotiate. Yeah, because we were being followed by, like, Morgan wasn't with our crew, like, there was, like, a dozen different kind of right. crews, and, like, that was actually kind of my, the only time I saw Morgan the whole weekend was when he uh, kind of came down to Hall H to negotiate to get the camera crew kind of back in <laughs> yeah, for yeah, this moment. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, there, yeah, I did definitely was kind of like, oh, this, this is, you know, yeah, exactly, this is not the mood that I want. Things, but, but as soon as kind of things kind of started up again and people were like, yeah, this is, you know, we're all here for, you know, yeah. the, this, this entertainment that we love, you know, the, the mood changed pretty quickly kind of once things 
stuff got going again. Well, your engagement was hilarious because um, my best friend was at that panel and she All right. went back to the hotel and she's like, oh my God, these two people just got engaged. It was so funny. <laughs> Since you're the love interest in the film, do you, do you incorporate any comic book role playing into your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure we're comfortable <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And, and what do you think about We like to keep some aspects of our lives fairly uh, traditional. Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> Take yeah. that as a yes. And um, what do you think of animated films like Fritz the Cat or more recently uh, Chico and Rita, which was nominated for the Academy Award that has uh, graphic uh, sexuality in animated films? I think, especially with like anime tradition, there's always been like, you know, non-PG animation. Yeah. You know, I think just oh, yeah. America is starting exactly. to catch up to it. Mm -hmm. And like, it's good. I don't think, you know, animations or cartoons are just for kids. You know, I think it's like such a beautiful art form. And I'm glad that like Miyazaki is getting his films like re-released in the U.S. Like, even though it's dubbed, which sucks. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys excited about this year? Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, definitely excited for The Hobbit at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. we, we got at Button on the we got this. We were the first ones to see the trailer. Oh, we, yeah. played, we played it three times. In a row. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had some technical difficulties, and then once they got it working, they're like, run it again, run it again. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's probably what I'm most excited for. Yeah, it's it's like the year of the the year of the dwarves this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah, and, and Ricky Gervais' new show on HBO. Oh, right. Yeah. Life's too short. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, are you now? You guys are still in grad school. Uh, I'm finishing up my ma uh, my master's in what? Uh, in media arts and technology, studying media and production and stuff. What are your plans after you graduate? I mean, obviously Comic-Con's always going to be there, but like, sure. you, got, you guys plan to go into Comic-Con like jobs that you can be like, hey, you know, do you have, I should, do you have a dream of somebody having your stuff be at Comic-Con and you're like in a booth and people are lining up to get your autograph? He's had stuff play yeah. at Comic-Con already. Um, I, I initially kind of came to, com uh, to Comic-Con as part of the, um, they run a little um, uh, short film festival, oh. and um, I went to film school at NYU and like did kind of genre. I did, um, <laughs> and you know made little kind of like genre short films that played at, at that film festival. Um, and um, I, while going to grad school, I've been kind of working as a as a TV editor. TV editor as well. So yeah, definitely you know paying the bills these days, but still kind of like. Nursing my own little projects. When you do the film festival there, there do they still let people kind of advertise on the show floor? Because I was. Oh yeah, I was, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Last year I was there with one, and they would not let anyone. Really? Yeah. Unless you have a booth, they won't. Yeah, they've yeah, been, been, been showing. Oh. That room had like twelve people in it because it's over on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah. moved it off of the, the main site. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.